G'day folks, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about people who tell stories about dying, going to hell, and then coming back again to tell everybody about it. Let me say right at the beginning, every one of those stories is garbage. Every single one of those stories is complete nonsense. And I want to show you, biblically speaking, why that is the case. Now, the first reason I want to give you is this. The Bible tells us very clearly that if people don't listen to Scripture, if people don't listen to the Word of God being preached or read, uh, then they won't listen, even if somebody comes back from the dead. I want to go through a passage of Scripture in detail in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, beginning at verse 19. Let's begin reading together. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was also a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, who had been placed at his gate, desiring to be fed from the crumbs falling from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, this beggar was most likely a cripple because it says here that he was placed at the rich man's Gate. So he was either a cripple or he was extremely sick and couldn't walk. And that's why he had to be placed there. It also says here that he was covered in sores and the dogs came and licked his sores. We have to realize that when it says the dogs came and licked his sores, it's not talking about, you know, a domesticated dog coming and licking his wound in kindness. These are wild scavenger dogs, and they are most likely going to eat him when he dies. So, so this is a particularly gruesome picture that Jesus is trying to paint. And he's trying to show this rich man who lives in luxury, and he just doesn't even want to give the crumbs that fall from his table to this poor beggar who is starving and eventually dies. And so does the rich man. Let's keep reading. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham from a distance and Lazarus in his presence. So he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. At this point, the roles have been reversed. Now the rich man is in torment. The rich man is suffering and Lazarus is relieved, and Lazarus is in comfort. But notice here that the rich man, he doesn't ask Abraham to release him. He doesn't say, give me a second chance, and if you give me a second chance, I'll go and tell the whole world and not to come to this place. No, that doesn't happen. The rich man seems to just accept his fate. He does beg to be relieved, but he knows he's not getting out. And that's the case when somebody is sent to hell. There is no escape when you are sent to hell. There's no second chance. Once you're in hell, that's it. Christians don't get sent to hell. Only unbelievers who have rejected God and rejected the word of God, only they get sent to hell. And this man knows that there is no second chance for him. His fate is sealed. Let's keep reading. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf, so that those who would pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. You see, Abraham has been here long enough to know that there is no escape. You cannot get out. There is a great big chasm. And you cannot escape the pit of hell. Let's keep reading. He said, then I pray you, Father, to send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers to testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Notice here again that the rich man does not beg for a second chance. The rich man doesn't say, give me a second chance so I can go and warn everyone. He knows his fate is sealed, but he does ask that Lazarus be sent back. And that's interesting because when you read the scriptures, you'll never find any example of a wicked man dying and coming back to life. 
but you do find examples of righteous people. You see examples of children and you see examples of righteous people. And there's also some examples where you don't really know where the person is at because it's so generic. But what we know for sure is that there is no example in scripture of a wicked person, somebody who would go to hell when they die. There's no example of anyone like that coming back from the dead. But here's another interesting point. Lazarus is concerned about his five brothers because he knows that if those five brothers also find themselves in hell, they will not be able to get out any more than he is able to get out. He knows that they won't get a second chance either. You see, there's no second chances. Once you die and once you go to hell, if you're an unbeliever and you die and you're sent to hell, there is no escape and there is no second chances. Let's keep reading to this. This next point here is very interesting. Let's read verse 27 again. He said, Then I pray you, Father, to send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren to testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if somebody from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they will not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, even if somebody should rise from the dead. You see what Abraham says. Abraham says they have the law and they have the prophets. They have the word of God. They've got the scriptures. And if they won't listen to the scriptures, neither will they be persuaded, even if somebody comes back from the dead. You know, when somebody gets on a stage in a church or gets onto social media and begins to tell people, I went to hell and, um, and I came back again and, and you need to be careful not to go to this place. The message they're trying to send you is that you can believe that hell is real because they've been there. They've seen it. And for that reason, you can believe it's real and you can be sure that if you listen to me, you won't go there. But let me tell you something. If people don't listen to the word of God, if they're not willing to listen to God, they will not be persuaded even if somebody comes back from the dead. Now, why would God send all these people back from the dead to warn everybody about hell if he's said this already in his word? It makes absolutely no sense. I myself can testify that when I was a kid and I was rebelling against God, I heard all these stories about people coming back from the dead. I remember when I was a kid, it was a guy called Ian McCormack. He was the, the famous one. He was stung by a stingray or something and, and he died and, and he came back. He went to hell and, and then he went to heaven and then he was sent back to warn everybody about it. Now, that had no effect on me whatsoever. I went off in my sin. I went off in my rebellion. I sinned against God. And I knew these stories. I heard of all these stories. But because I disregarded the word of God, I didn't want to listen even to the stories of people coming back from the dead. And I can remember a time when I'd been in a fight. I'd been stabbed and I was in a a puddle of my own blood sitting there. My brother was holding my my wound and saying to me, make your peace with God because you're going to die. And I didn't. I refused to get right with God. Even though I'd heard all these stories about people going to hell and back, I refused to get right with God. Why? Because I had rejected his word. It was many years later when somebody confronted me about my sin and spoke to me about my offenses against God. And I realized my guilt and shame and God did a grace, a work of grace in my heart. It was then that I repented of my sins and got saved. But it was certainly not because of a story that somebody went to hell and back again. That had zero impact on my life. You see, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, And I want to look at this passage in detail, actually. The context of this passage is the once for all sacrifice of Christ. And it's been compared to the the repetitive Levitical sacrifices. The fact that the Levites offered sacrifices again and again and again and they couldn't take away sin. Yet the sacrifice of Christ was offered once for all time. That's the context of this passage. And I say that so that you can get an idea what the Bible means by once. Let's read, let's read this passage together in Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse 27. And it says this, As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this comes the judgment, 
So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and he will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to save those who eagerly wait for him. What this is saying is that in the same way it is appointed for a man to die once, so too Christ died once as a sacrifice for our sins, never to be repeated again. And so basically, if we look at this in its context, it's clearly saying that it is appointed for a man to die only once. And then after that comes the judgment. Now, you might say, what about people that are resurrected in the scriptures? Well, I would say, first of all, this, that those people are generally either children or the righteous. There's no example of an unrighteous person coming back from the dead after being in hell. We have to also understand that if you say there can be a second chance after death, then why not everybody getting a second chance after death? And, and if you accept everybody's going to get a second chance after death, then uh, what's the point of warning everybody about hell in the first place? Which really leads to my second, uh, sorry, my third objection to this idea of people coming back from the dead after being sent to hell. And that is that it undermines the urgency of the preaching of the gospel. You see, when you read the New Testament and you, you read the book of Acts, these people put their lives on the line. These people suffered because they wanted to, wanted to preach the gospel and warn of the judgment to come if you rejected Christ. And all of that is undermined if somehow we can get a second chance after death. Another point is this, is that the Bible says that, that the Holy Spirit is sent into the world to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and of the judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. That's what Jesus said. So the Holy Spirit is in the world convicting people of sin. But we don't read of the Holy Spirit being in hell convicting people of sin. You have to remember as well that the, the work of um, salvation is a work of God uh, in the heart of the unbeliever, leading him and drawing him to Christ so that he'll put his faith in Christ. And I don't see that kind of thing happening in hell. Hell seems to be a place where God's favor and his grace and his uh, benevolence is withdrawn. There is nothing left but the wrath of God upon the sinner in hell hell. There simply is no second chance for unbelievers. And for those reasons, I believe all of these stories that people are, are telling on YouTube and in churches about dying, going to hell and coming back again are absolute nonsense. And I would hang my hat on the argument that if people don't want to listen to the word of God and they don't want to listen to the warnings of scripture, then they will not listen even if somebody comes back from the dead. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comments section and you'll see me in my next video.